Hello, this is Max Drake speaking. I just want to talk about uh, an issue that's been coming up and it's had me a little bit challenged. Um, this is the timesheet app that I actually did and uh, you can fill out your timesheet through here and you can add some time on there. And I was trying to make it a little bit um, all-encompassing app. So there you can actually do your expenses as well. And inside the expenses, you can identify which project that they're actually coming from with a choice. The other thing that I suddenly thought would be good is you've got your um, phone there, you've got the app, you're doing your times, you go on a site or somewhere and you have a meeting. It would be nice to have the calendar in there so that you can schedule your calendar events from within the same app so you don't actually have to go somewhere else and go and play with two or three different apps to actually do something. So in the front I had this dashboard and on the dashboard I actually just had uh, a, an iframe of the um, calendar in there which would then show me the events that I've added in onto this particular um, app. And if we just look at the timesheet there you can see this is an iframe. And I've seen a couple of posts where David has said um, iframes are a bit of a no-no inside Glide apps. They're very good at breaking the app. So I thought, well, what's a solution for that one? Well, the solution in this particular case was just to have a link. So basically, instead of um, viewing the app, you just have a button that just takes you to a full page in the app. And in some ways, it's going to be slightly bigger on the screen than what it is um, uh, in the app, because the app is trying to squeeze these corners off here to fit it in within the frame of the app itself. So just pushing it out onto the other one seemed to be a good solution from that point of view. That's as good as, as, as where it got, but I was actually trying to look on my um, uh, uh, personal finance app, app and I got this and what I was trying to do was have a dashboard which was reflecting changes as we went along. So I was hitting a dilemma here. Now what I'd actually started to play with as well uh, was um, web analytics and the inside Google um, Sheets, there's an add-on which actually brings the Google Analytics into there and you can create a report. And in here, I've got a report creator, report configuration here. And I've got about uh, 12 different reports that it's doing. When I look at Google Analytics, if I just go to them, I can look at the home page and it gives me some information, but I never really know what to do with it. So I don't know how to filter it down to get meaningful information that may be valid for me. And so with this, I can tweak these things and do them. And then uh, what I've been able to do on this particular one is that I've got it on a dashboard onto this one here. So if I view this post here, some of them are iframes and some of them are images. Now, the interesting thing with when I was playing with this, and you see they start coming up, and uh, you can see these different images coming through from the web analytics where I've actually done um, chart users by country. So I've got a chart sitting in there, um, and I can do that. Now, when you actually publish the chart, you can publish it as an interactive, which is basically an iframe with the embed, or you can publish it as an image. Now the image has a URL, and if you change that information on that particular chart, the URL stays the same. So therefore you update the image, which is really, really good. So in this particular one, when I was playing with this um, uh, Google um, Sheet apps um, here, um, Every time I the data changed when I reran the report, as in the add-ons, you can go to sheets and run the report. It triggers the changes on the sheets, and then the actual um, charts update, which is really good. And so I've actually got a scheduled report in here, inside this particular app, which um, uh, runs every day at four to five a.m. So therefore, I get a daily report on where my web apps are. So it's something that I'm. Um, interested in exploring further and making a glide app that will actually so I can actually see some statistics on my web pages and how they're performing. So taking that idea there I suddenly thought I'd come across also um, uh, but initially when I was doing these ones here I was doing these by um, and putting them onto the uh, my web page and these were all, um, uh, as you can see, if I hover over, it's given me information. So these are iframed. So that means they're interactive. 
Um, so all of these are interactive, so these are iframes, but I couldn't do that in the personal app. So inside the personal app, I actually wanted these to, to be here. They're not interactive, but they do give the information and they do update. So I came across um, this home temperature monitoring by SJ, um, and uh, he ended up having charts instead of... Um, uh, iframes in his app and I thought oh it can be done so I was really pleased to see his app it was the next day I've been thinking about it overnight and then I saw this this particular chart that I'm trying to do is I've got a budget which is in grey and then I've got as I've gone through to the um, day of the month I've been paying these um, bills off as I go along. Then I also wanted a total sum of the bills as they came through and then where I was. So I had an indication of how much I still had to pay. So these are just data lines. So this was a mixed chart. And then I've got on the left, the um, heights are based on the col colum columns. And the chart of the the scale on the right is for the um, line graphs so i'm starting to learn a little bit more about the graphs and at the moment i'm not too sure whether they will automatically update or whether i think they will automatically update because on this particular one i've got quite a few scripts in here which are updating the data as i go along with the switches and i may need to actually trigger those events and trigger those charts to update as I go through. So I found that the way the solution with this one was to use charts and so I'm just using an image. I'm not using, um, uh, so if I just look at the personal, personal finance app on the main page, I've just got two images. So format equals image, and the same on the other one. If I go into that one, and and so I've not I've got through the difficulty of the iframe, but this I suppose is specific for charts. But in some ways, that's all I need for my dashboard, and I don't think I need it to be that dynamic. I just want a bit of an overview on on things. Um, this one maybe I can do something to squeeze these sizes down either side to ad ad allow for more graphs or maybe I can break the graphs up even more. I've also still got the number um, things down there and inside here with the app I can actually say it's a, a, again um, I've given here I've using the display data so that I can see whether I paid them or not. So for number three I can say oh I can now, why has that got done? Because it's actually saying that it isn't. Um, that hasn't updated yet. So um, these are indicators that are coming through that you can come through in the dashboard. I'm still not totally pleased with this part of it. This um, part is actually done by classifications. I would actually prefer to have them done by date so that I just got, I could sort of tick off the bills as they came through as far as my forecasting bills to see that I was reasonably good. And then the other one that I want is a comparison of my actual spend from here um, compared to my... Um, uh, budget and then also if there's some anomalies of whether there's something which has been associated with a budget item or whether it's a, a I've just gone and done a spend of something else um, uh, so it's it's slowly developing but I'm, I'm pleased with the dashboard idea and I'm pleased with using images rather than iframes because I don't want an app that's going to crash. I actually want to make sure um, that information is valid. You know, if I lose that sheet and that data, it's a bit of a frustration. And uh, I suppose I could just do an automatic backup at times, um, but I'd rather just not use iframes. If, if Glide app say no, then I don't want to. Anyway, I hope that's been of interest. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, can you give it a thumbs up, please? Thank you very much.